Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely Wednesday morning. Today I'd like to follow up on a video that I did recently. Apple soldered in SSDs are engineered in the worst way possible. When I did this video, there were certain elements that I don't think I explained very well because I got the same question over and over again in the comments. I didn't explain things very well at all, so I'm going to try to explain it here in a TLDR way. In 2016, Apple started soldering the solid state drives onto the board, which was an annoying thing, but it wasn't the end of the world, because even if your soldered on SSD failed, your computer still turned on, meaning that you could take your backup of your operating system or your DD Rescue clone, you could plug it in to the side of your computer, and you would have the stupid dongle sticking out of your computer, but you could still boot into your operating system. And let's face it, if you were buying a MacBook in 2016 or 17, you got used to dongles. So you would plug this in, you would hold down the option key, you could choose your external drive of choice, you could have a little SSD, you could even, I don't know, duct tape the thing onto the back of your lid, and you would have a usable computer. You could boot into Mac OS, you could boot into Windows, you could boot into Linux, you could boot into whatever you wanted to boot into just fine, even if your internal SSD died. Fast forward to 2018, 2019, Apple put the T2 chip into their machines, which radically changed the architecture. If you look at those schematics, the T2 chip is, is a lot. It takes on a lot of the functions that used to be done by the Platform Controller Hub, otherwise known as the PCH, on Intel platforms. It took the place of the SPI ROM, which was what you guys would otherwise know as the, the BIOS or UEFI so on a PC laptop. So that T2 chip essentially needs to work in order for your computer to turn on. Like if you take the BIOS chip off of a motherboard of any computer, it, it stops working. You need the BIOS in order for it to actually work. And here, one of the things you'll notice is that there is no more UEFI. What you have is uh, this is literally all on the NAND. So that T2 chip that deals with all the stuff that used to be dealt with by the PCH on PC platforms and the BIOS chip is now on the T2 chip. The T2 chip runs BridgeOS. BridgeOS is like a bastardized version of iOS, and that is going to be stored on the NANDs. So if the NANDs die, that means that your computer is no longer going to turn on and function because you don't have a BIOS chip. So if the NANDs die, you're no longer in a place where, okay, my internal SSD doesn't work, I can just plug in my replacement SSD and boot off of this because your computer's not going to turn on. Apple made it so that the, the part, the where part that you're writing to every day in your professional computer also just so happens to hold the operating system for the chip that is necessary for the computer to boot and turn on. Like, imagine really, really weird the way that they chose to do that. But it actually gets better. It gets considerably better. So the machine is dead. Well, why don't you just get buy replacement NANDs and replace them? Shouldn't that be easy? Uh, well, no. And again, if you want to read the TLDR of this, there is a three-part series that is done way better than my eight, you know, 15 minutes of salt over here. There's a three-part series. I highly suggest you watch this channel. There's a gentleman on Linus's forum that tried to do a TLDW of it, but it's still fairly long. You can go over this if you want. Uh, absolute TLDR is that these NANDs are actually custom designs. They cannot be found anywhere outside of Apple devices, and they cannot be purchased aside from uh, Apple's website if you want to get a donor SSD. So this, this, this is not a normal NAND. This has a custom ARM-based controller that also runs its own uh, miniature operating system as firmware and acts as an intermediary between the PCI Express 1 connection and the T2 chip as wear and other NAND management stuff. So you're not getting this NAND elsewhere. And a big credit to proprietary modules on Linus Tech Tips Forum for making that TLDR. That's just, you're not, you're not going to get that off of another board. So you're only going to get that off of a donor MacBook. So if I go to a donor MacBook, here's the big problem. Okay, I'm going to buy a donor board for like three or $400 for this repair. The NANDs on that board may have 50 terabytes of ride cycles. I don't know. And since NANDs are aware part, I am not doing that to my customers. We meme about the way Apple treats their customers. I am going, I, I am never going to treat my customers as poorly as Apple does. I'm not doing that to them. I'm not giving you NANDs with 50 terabytes of write cycles. So what's the other solution? Well, buy new. Obviously, you can't buy these parts new because, well, obviously, like, hell will freeze over before Henix or any of these companies get to sell this shit to DigiKey or Nouser.com. But if you take a look over here, this is the only place I can buy it. I can get a one terabyte SSD upgrade kit for $600. And after I buy that, so okay, A, the base cost for parts is now 600 bucks. B, I now have to take the shields off, desolder the chips off of there without damaging them, reball them, desolder the chips off of the main motherboard, get rid of the underfill and all that without damaging it, and soldering on them. So I'm paying $600 part cost alone for one terabyte that's not even ready to use. I have to prepare that part for use. Do you know what this is going to do to the cost of your motherboard repair on your laptop? 
this is not going to be an economically viable repair. Nobody is going to want to pay $800 to $900 to fix their motherboard. That's obviously just, this is a meme. This is, this is not something that is economically viable in any way, shape, or form. While it is technically possible to do, it is not economically feasible to do. It actually gets better because it, you have a computer that you would have to pay like a thousand bucks to get to boot again. It gets better. One of the things I noted in this video that I did last year, how most 16-inch MacBook Pros often kill themselves and why they are unfixable, is that these machines tend to fail a lot more often in a catastrophic way. What happens is that the NAND, it's not just that the NAND fails, the NAND power rail actually winds up shorting itself to ground because the NAND dies in this violent fashion where it shorts power in to ground. When this happens, the entire board is, is useless. The, it, it, the machine, even if the BIOS was not stored on the NANDs, would not turn on because your main power line is shorted to ground. This happens way more often on the newer models than older, like 2141 all the time, 1990 fairly often. I can count on one hand how many A1706s and A1707s from before they did this shit had NAND shorted to ground. Because it's zero. It's like never. We have fixed thousands upon thousands, probably tens of thousands of A1706s and A1707s at this business. Zero of them have ever had shorted NAND. 2141? We get three of these a day with shorted NAND. At least three of these a day with shorted NAND. With the NAND is shorted to ground, that's shorting the 2.5-volt power line to ground, and the 2.5-volt power line being shorted to ground destroys the chip powering the NANDs, which is powered by the battery, and PP by G3 hot, which kills the entire computer. Now, Apple likes to innovate. They like to do things in different ways. And very often, this can be a good thing. For instance, in 2010, when Apple started including a solid-state drive with the Air, and in 2012, when the Pros just they all just came with SSDs, what Apple said is, yeah, you're paying us 800 to 1200 for a computer. You're getting 64 to 128 gigabytes of storage. Like, that's it. I know that on paper, the other guy says 500 gigabytes, and we only have 64 or 128 gigabytes, but trust us, it's better. And this was a ballsy move to do because a lot of people just buy stuff based on spec sheets. And it worked because I can't tell you how many people that are not tech savvy thought that Macs are just innately faster because they feel faster when the reality is that the reason the MacBook feels faster than the PC is most PC manufacturers just cared about having a higher number that they could save gigabytes. They were afraid to have the default configuration be an SSD, even though it offers a way better experience for the user. Apple was able to grab all those customers. I've spoken to tons of less savvy customers that thought that Macs were just naturally fast. And then when they tried my PC that used an SSD to boot into Linux, they're like, oh, wow, this is fast too. This what'd you do? It's like, well, I just put an SSD in it. They made that as a ballsy decision. In 2012, they stopped using crap screens in their products. They were not only high resolution, but they were also fairly high quality. They had really good black levels, really color, good color gamut and everything else. Back when lots of standard PC Windows laptops were being sold with like 1366 by 768 TN screens that had horrible viewing angles and were just absolute shit. Even when you spent 1600 bucks for the computer, you know what it was like in 2012. 99% of your PC laptops came with shit screens um, by default. Apple's done things that are like, you know, they, they really do try to innovate. Apple really does try to push the ball forward in new and exciting ways. And sometimes they manage to genuinely improve the user experience while minimizing um, stupidity. And at other times, they don't. And I've gone over that in my video going over all of Apple's engineering failures over time, which were failures that you just fundamentally were not having in other computers. And I'll be honest with you. When it came to storage, I really thought that the A1278 SATA cable was, was it. Like... Apple managed to make the only desktop or laptop computer I have ever seen in my life where the SATA cable is a regular failure. This is a cable that's not even bending as, uh, with regular use. It's literally just a SATA cable, and it's known for failing on a regular basis. They managed to one-up themselves and have now managed to create a computer where the NAND fails on a regular basis and fails in a manner that not only doesn't allow the machine to boot even if it wasn't shorted to ground, but shorts it to ground and screws up its ability to boot because the NAND for the storage of your main operating system and all your programs and all your video just so happens to be the BIOS as well. Really? There's no better way you could have done this.
And rest assured, it is not a coincidence that the difference in NAND from 2017 to 2019 when they started using this custom order thing has nothing to do with the fact that they fail in this catastrophic fashion. When you decide to reinvent the wheel because the wheel being round just isn't good enough for you, you are more likely to run into catastrophic failures than you are when you do things in the tried and true way. And I understand wanting to innovate. But the problem I've always had with Apple is that when there's a mistake that they run into during this innovation, it's always at the expense of the customer. Customer. It is always at the expense of repairability, and above all, they don't take accountability or responsibility for it until somebody class action sues them. You have a different architecture for your NAND than everybody else, and you have this different, really weird failure mode that everybody else doesn't seem to have on anywhere near the scale of something like the 16-inch MacBook Pro. No way in hell is it we just decided this year that we're going to use a different custom design NAND architecture that's different from everybody else, and that just so happens to be the one piece of NAND that shorts the power line to ground on all these computers in a way that your normal SSDs just don't do. The problem with trying to push the ball forward is that when you do things in a manner that is different from how everybody else is doing it, you're more likely to run into problems that everybody else is not running into. The way everybody else has been putting together SSDs, like they're doing it this way for a reason. This architecture is stable, this architecture works, and this architecture has a fairly low failure rate. The architecture is for all your other SSDs. The architecture that Apple is using here for these special NANs that they're having custom manufactured for them, in my opinion, suck balls. What happens with this architecture is they randomly short to ground for no good fucking reason. There could be no liquid inside of these computers, they could have been maintained very well, not dropped at all, and one day, just poof, just doesn't turn on, and the NAND is shorted to ground. This is stupid. I'm confident when I say this. We get lots of solid-state drives in for data recovery. We get different brands of PCs in from time to time, and we got a lot of A1706 and a lot of A1707 MacBooks in. And whilst they may have SSDs that die... They do not die in this catastrophic fashion that the new ones are where they actually kill the entire machine. And again, there's two reasons it's killing the machine. The first reason is when the NAND is corrupt, like what you see in the, uh, in the beginning of this video with the first one that I'm going over, when the NAND is corrupt, it just like boots on and off, on and off, where it just doesn't turn on because it can't access the BIOS. But the second one that I did over here, it's dead because the actual power line is being shorted to ground because the NAND has failed in such a catastrophic fashion. Cost of that innovation is A, the customer's money, obvious, B, the customer's data. Now, one of your questions may be, why have you waited so long to mention this? Why have you only put it in one video a year ago and not really gone into it in detail? And this goes into the third point. Can I be honest and like really candid with you for a moment? I don't find this fun anymore. I really don't. This used to be like a fun cat and mouse game. It's just not fun anymore. One of the things that I went over is that we used to be able to buy laptop screens and we used to be able to replace just the LCD. This is a part that we used to cost anywhere from $38 to $90. Now we cannot get that anymore for $38 to $90. The supply chain for that is gone. Apple has managed to get us out of, just ensure that these are no, no longer available to us. What we need to buy now are these. We can only get display assemblies. Display assemblies often cost over $300. They are used, so we are not giving a new device to our customer. We are giving them a used product, but it gets even better because with the new MacBooks, you can't even just swap a display assembly anymore. You have to swap the chip from the old device and solder it onto the new one. So you, you've now made it not just the screen replacement job, but it's also a soldering job that's going to have hundreds of dollars less profit margin, and you're giving the customer, you have to sell the customer on a used screen, which is just icky. The thing that I've advertised for over 10 years on my website, we only use new grade A screens. I used to love standing behind that. It's disgusting that we had to edit that. Or we have stuff like this where, you know, you know exactly what's wrong with the computer, but you can't buy the chip to actually fix it because it's not available anywhere. And when you contact the vendors, they, tell, they say they're not allowed to sell to you. Or we have stuff like this where I used to be able to just replace a sleep sensor. It was very easy to replace a sleep sensor on a MacBook. Now, the sleep sensor is it requires calibration, and the calibration software is only available from Apple, and Apple is not going to make it available to us. We have to connect to their servers. We have to be authorized, and again, if I actually go through the process to get authorized uh, via the IRP program, I'm not going to be able to buy these types of chips and do everything else that I do in my store so that I can actually fix stuff for customers. So I can't even get access to software basic stuff. So what I have to do now is we have to actually fix the cable. So what we're doing here, and what you'll see uh, Chris do in the videos that he does, is w what he does is he actually fixes the cable. 
I'm not kidding. You see how excited he is? That's going to fade, I guarantee you, after he's done his 1500th cable repair. What he has to do is he has to take the chip off of the cable, like start filing it down to the bond wires and stuff, and start filing the rust off of the chip and try to get that cable to be repaired. Because if he can't repair the cable, well, he can't just get a new cable because God forbid he have access to the calibration software. It's just, it's not fun anymore. It's like this death by a thousand cuts thing or a profession that I used to find really exciting, really cool, took a lot of pride in. A lot of it has just kind of gone away. So yeah, like we've known about Bridge OS for years. We've known about the fact that the NANs have the SPI ROM in the BIOS on it for years. And we've known that these are uh, like short to ground all the time for a long time. Why hasn't it come up on the channel a lot? because I don't do repair videos very often. Why don't I do repair videos very often? Because it just ain't fun anymore. Like I know, on YouTube, you're supposed to be really happy and excited and like, yeah, well, you know, every, you, you, everybody on YouTube puts on this, this like fake happy face before they begin their videos because their audience needs to see them excited and happy and yay, or they don't watch. I can't do that on this profession anymore. Like li literally less is available now than what was available 15 years ago. At the end of the day, that that's the direction it'll continue going in. It's like again, it's like somebody out there is going to make the argument if we get access to the calibration tool for a sleep sensor, if we can buy the NANs new and not pay six hundred dollars, the world will end. The S and P five hundred will crash to one thousand. Innovation will stop in its tracks as we know it. If Lewis is able to buy a screen, your bank accounts and credit score will be hacked. Your home will be pillaged. Your family will be sexually assaulted in a parking lot. The world as we know it will end. It's just annoying. It's annoying to be on the other end of that, and it's annoying to realize that at the end of the day, no matter how many bills you get passed, no matter how many reports the FTC writes, no matter what ends up in the president's desk, at the end of the day, we will be locked out of everything. When you realize that, it just becomes less fun to get on camera and say, hey, everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to fix a MacBook, when I know that realistically speaking, today we're probably not. That's why you have a device that is unfixable, econo not economically viable, and doesn't work. And I would bet my balls that there is a direct correlation between Apple using some specially designed, specially custom made for them NAND that's different from what everybody else is using, and the insanely high failure rate they have where their IC short to ground. Now again, an IC shorting to ground, these things happen. It is not unheard of for an IC to short the voltage in, the VCC, or the VDDN pin to ground when it fails. For it to happen on a memory chip this regularly is insane. It's just insane. And there's no way in hell that the switch over to this architecture when they started using the T2 chip has nothing to do with it. No way. You started using NANs that nobody else is using. At the same time that you start using these custom NANs that nobody else is using, this happens all the time? Come on, man. And I know that somebody out there is going to say, well, there's an engineering reason that they did this. There's some benefit. There's somebody out there that got an extra eight megabytes a second of write speed out of this. There's some edge case for security that 99.9% .9 of the population doesn't know about or care about that is going to be more secure because of this. And fine. But it's important to understand that A, these decisions are choices. B, the decision to lock us out of the ability to purchase replacement parts or calibration tools is a choice that this company is making. And three, above all, that if you want to call this innovation, it's going to come at a cost. The cost of your innovation, the cost of your extra three megabytes a second, the cost of your uh, additional layer of security that, God forbid, unless Jack Bauer is torturing you, something tells me you're just not going to need, is coming at the cost of having a computer that actually has wear parts that are replaceable, that has some sort of redundancy, that, that boots... When the NAND that is much more delicate than last generation's NAND dies, you can plug in a drive and use that computer booting off of an external drive. And the idea that you are not going to have a standard BIOS, you're now going to have the T2 chip, and this architecture, it is going to boot directly off of an operating system running on the NANDs that you guys, when you're doing studio video production, are putting 50 to 100 terabytes of write cycles on, and once that is fully done, the computer will never turn on again because they are using the same NAND that you use for your storage for the actual BIOS. You don't have to be a computer engineer to understand that this is fucking stupid. You don't have to have a degree in something to realize 
that this is bad, that this is going to result in customers around the country with repair bills of over $1,000 for a product that didn't need to be designed that way. But what do I know? I'm a guy with a cat, rants on a couch. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.